What's up everyone? Today we've got a topic that is very near and dear to our hearts. We are going to be lifting the curtain on the UMS, our revolutionary unified movement system, and talking about why it is absolutely critical for you to combine strength and flexibility all in the same workout. Good morning, tribe. We are pumped for today's show and we're also pumped for the uh, online coaching exclusive group coaching call coming up straight after this. Uh, today, as Rad said, we're going deep. Uh, if it's your first rodeo with the Unity Tribe, my name is Yanni Bormeister. To my left is Phil White, our brilliant physiotherapist. Across the table is Rad, my brother, and behind the mic is the voice of God, Sir Richie. Uh, today, uh, yeah, look, this is a really near and dear um, topic of ours because we're going to share a little bit of insight into how we sort of came, uh, we, we fumbled our way through the last 20 years of our training to create something that is quite special. We're told all the time uh, that, we're, that we're doing it good. So uh, how is everyone today? I am very excited about this show. I am. This is, you uh, love talking about yourself. That's why. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. No, but in, in all honesty, the w the conversation that we had yesterday, where we were talking about, it, you know, f the, one of the main reasons why this group and all of the programs that we do are loved so much is because Yanni and I are always, always going back to the drawing board and saying, how can we make this stuff create a, a bigger impact on people's lives? What what is it that we're doing that's causing less people to get a great result. Like what can we do to bridge that gap? Um, and what came out of yesterday's conversation is that we've got thousands of people in this group now and we go live every day, Phil, Yanni, Richard and I to create, to add value to your lives and answer your questions. But we've never really said, this is what the UMS is and this is why we do it. And a lot of people ask us that. Um, and so that's why I'm excited about this because I, I, it's something that I believe in fiercely. What are you excited today about, Phil? Other than I think your it's coffee. Just, I mean, this coffee, uh, it's just my <laughs> eyes with it over there. Um, no, I think this is a great opportunity to, yeah, I guess get, give people that sort of big picture insight and the and the real vision behind what you guys do because I've, I've never met such a unrelenting uh, pair of, uh, group of people who just like want to keep put like improving on what they're doing, not resting on laurels and, and constantly making things better. So it's been very inspiring to see that in action. So good to kind of get a bit of that, like a, an insight into how that kind of all started but also i'm really excited about the idea of more people being in that online coaching group mm -hmm. because it's a it's an amazing group i'm really enjoying the um uh you know we've, we've started doing these online coaching calls and i think that's where people will get the most value it's really hard training by yourself i've done i've tried it before and had a shit time and i thought i didn't like the gym and then when i started training in this gym i kind of learned to love the gym and i, and I know that with this online tr coaching group if you can be Posting videos, having that amazing, um, you know, support group there who are helping you with your technique, like you know, seeing your milestones, seeing your progressions, and encouraging you along the way, then that just makes all the difference in, in training. So I think it's a really great thing that um, you know we're doing a bit of a push to uh, give people a, a, a taste of that, and I think it really help people. So yeah, that's right. I mean, look, that's and and to to sort of add to what Phil's just said, it's the area of our focus, um, uh, Rad. Myself and Richie uh, have a have a roadmap over the next 12, six to 12 months to sort of exit the operations of Unity Gym here and put it under management. And we've got an amazing crew that we're training at the moment to take over that. And of course, we're still gonna be here involved and we film the podcast here every day and we're gonna be out there interacting and producing more content. But the area of our focus over the next year or two is this group and the UMS online coaching group and building the uh, the system into an app so that it's brilliantly accessible on your smartphone device and all that sort of thing. And there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up. So yeah, anyone who's jumping on this, uh, I really believe, I can't remember who said it last week. This is a no brainer, man. Mm, this yeah. is uh, this is an amazing opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the w w I'll just quickly say as well, the, the, the current offer that we've got for the, the two week free trial of the UMS online coaching program um, we are going to extend that for this week because we believe that this is an amazing opportunity and also 
because we're about to make a huge, huge change to the program, and I'm going to announce this at the start of the show for those of you that don't make, us, make it all the way through. Currently, the UMS online coaching subscription gives you access to every other single program that we sell. So all of the master classes that are 149 US dollars, the 18 minute mobility routine for 99 US dollars, all the, all the mobility routines, everything, it's all included. And that is going to stop at the end of this week. So only the people that are currently subscribed by, or that have a current subscription at the end of this week will retain access to all those programs. And we're doing that for a very, very uh, good reason. Let me just reiterate, um, because Rad flipped over that quite flippantly. Uh, anyone who's already subscribed, an existing subscriber, won't lose anything. Yep. Yeah, you're not going to lose, well, I was getting to that. You're not going to lose anything for those people that are, that are already subscribed. And those, that includes those of you that are on the two-week trial that continue your subscription at the end of this period. And the reason why we're doing that is because one of the biggest problems that we have with new members is that people get overwhelmed. And we, we go through all this process of making videos where we try and tell people, you know, don't look at all of the other programs, just focus on the UMS when you've got access to it. And we believe that we're doing people disservice. Um, a disservice by, by giving access to everything rather than giving them the access to the one thing that they need to do the most. And we're going to talk today about why that is the UMS. The UMS, the Unify Movement System, is everything that you need for many, many, many months if you want to become strong, flexible and athletic. But that said, all of those other programs are insanely valuable and if you, if you have ambitious goals, eventually you're going to use them. So yeah, if you haven't already jumped onto the free trial, then this is literally your last chance to get access to everything. Um, so the membership, Luke w Wasinski is saying, the membership. what does a membership cost? It's 49 US dollars a month, which is, if you compare that to any other online coaching programs that I've seen, it's insanely valuable because not only do you get one of the most revolutionary programs you'll ever get access to, which we're going to talk about now, but you get access to us coaching you uh, weekly, where we only do this in the UMS online coaching group. We don't do it in the Movement Mastermind group, but anyone that posts videos for any feedback, we we really give them, we go above and beyond. And the three of us, three very experienced coaches, four of us actually, of Richard us. as well. Yep. And um, we give guests on give uh, constructive a lot. We've, we've been heavily restricted by the guests that we could get on because of COVID. Uh, we had a great mm. lineup this year and uh, that will continue once mm. we uh, once we get through this yeah. period. And by, and by the way, Luke, you can uh, you can cancel whenever you want. There is no notice period or anything. It's just, if you want to cancel, you cancel. Um, yeah. All right. So why don't we, why don't we talk about how it all started, Yoni. Before we get started, I just want to hear Richie's voice, just once. How are Hello. you, Richie? Hello. Hello. <laughs> the voice of God. This is God. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pre-frame how it got started. Yanni and I, I'm 42, Yanni's 40, and uh, we've been training pretty much our whole lives in something. We've done some kind of sport or some kind of physical activity ever since we were kids. Uh, even if it was when we were kids just riding around on BMX bikes in, in the bush. Uh, we both started, um, I, I, we started martial arts when we were very young. Yanni got into football. I got into rollerblading. Football is in, in Australia, um, a rugby uh, league. league. Um, and uh, I got into rollerblading. And then when Yanni was 15, he started kickboxing. And about six months later, I started with him when I was 17. Um, we did martial arts for quite a while. and. Where we really started to go in different directions was when I started Kung Fu and Yanni got into boxing. From there, that led Yanni into weightlifting and Yanni got into weightlifting at an early age. How old were you, about 21? I hit the gym for the very first time when I was 19. Yeah. Uh, I was like that skinny that my coach sort of encouraged me to do it. And that's when I, I, I went down to just the weights room at the PCYC club that I was boxing at. Yep. Uh, but I didn't join like a, a big gym fitness first until I was yeah about 2021. 20, yep. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't step foot into a gym until I was 26 when I became a personal trainer. Yeah. I did I did kung fu and I became a personal trainer. Yeah, I I'll never forget the conversation I had with Yanni at the time we were both driving trucks for a um, delivery service where the, you deliver um, uh, construction equipment to and from construction sites. And I said to Yanni, we, we were both very unhappy with what we were doing for money. And I said to Yanni, why don't we become personal trainers? You know, the only thing that we've ever done in our lives that no one's ever had to push us to do is, is go to the gym and do our training and we can maybe make a career out of it and have a gym one day. And, um, but we didn't train together from in our early 20s uh, or late teens. We, we didn't train together at all. So we really went in different ways and we were always training, but never together, never, never actually working side by side. 
Except I, for the years of sparring that we did together. No, but that, but, yeah, but no, no, but that's what I mean. Yeah. But that stopped when I was 19 yeah, and you were right. 17. When yeah. you started boxing and I started Kung Fu, that's when the sparring stopped because we sparred when we did kickboxing together. Yeah, that's right. And, we used to, and so we were late in our teens years when we stopped. And then we didn't do anything together until I got back from the army. I joined the army when I was 30 and I got out when I was 34. And when I got out at 34, I became a personal trainer again with Yanni. So this is eight years ago at the same fitness first. And for the first time in over a decade, we were now training together. And we both had tickets on ourselves. That's an Australian saying where we both thought we were uh, pretty hot stuff. Pretty hot stuff. Because we were both <laughs> good at what we could do. But we started <coughs> training together and very, very quickly the the differences in our abilities showed. And the main differences that were there was when it came to upper body strength, at, at the time, it, when I was in the army, I started to learn about calisthenics and I, I really just kind of learned how to do a muscle up. I wanted, I wanted to be able to do a muscle up. And I worked my ass off for a muscle up. I worked really hard at it for about a year and a half. I went from barely being able to do three or four pull ups to being able to do muscle ups, but I wasn't good at them. And I could, I could very proudly do one strict muscle up on the rings. And I showed Yanni how to do it. And I was really, you know, thought I was going to be teaching my younger brother how to do muscle ups. And in the first workout that I showed him how to do it, he did, he got up, he couldn't do a muscle up at all. And I showed him a couple of things. And then by the end of the workout, he was doing sets of three or four muscle ups. So it became really clear that Yanni's upper body strength was... a very devastating moment for Ray. <laughs> a little part of his heart died. It that did. Day. It did. Yeah. Because I worked really, really hard to be able to do one muscle up. And in the one workout, like I, I, I'd do three sets of one and then I couldn't even do one. I was so fatigued. And Yanni was doing four or five sets of three or four muscle ups. And it was really a, a real hit to my ego for me. And Yanni got the same hit to his ego when we were squatting because I'd been doing Kung Fu for many years and my flexibility in my hips and my ankles was um, far greater than Yanni's. And we were squatting and within about a month, I was out squatting Yanni by a long shot. I was, I remember I, I got up to doing sets of eight or 10 reps on 120 kilos and Yanni was really buckling to get like 100 kilos um, for the same volume and his, and his form was, was crushing under him. And it was the same thing for Yanni. Yanni had been squatting for years and he was looking at me going, why the hell is Rad out squatting me? And it took us about a year to really come to terms with what we were seeing, but it became very, very clear that the, that the ways that we were training were not creating a balanced body. We, we both had some real strengths and some real weaknesses. And it was quite a while before we both came to a, a conscious acknowledgement of this isn't the way to go. Like we shouldn't just keep training the way we are. We need to figure out why why was I outperforming Yanni and things that he'd worked so much harder than me at and vice versa. Well, it became apparent that, um, that the notion of true strength cannot be achieved in the absence of mobility because without a doubt, and I say this in <coughs> the nicest possible way, I was a lot stronger than Rad at that point. Way he was, he was like probably fitter than, fitter than me because they do a lot of running and pack marching and stuff like that in the army, but m I was way stronger. But the fact that he could out squat me uh, within a, a week or two of training together was, you know, it was a real um, eye opener. And I'd never squatted with a barbell ever. The only difference was that he was very flexible. There was no resistance whatsoever. And he could use the full stretch shortening cycle of his lower limbs so he could get all the way down, bounce out of the bottom with no risk of injury. And I was really struggling to get deep and pushing it. And I'd completely neglected flexibility up until that point. I hadn't stretched my lower body at all, hadn't done any flexibility training. And yeah, I, I, it, it was a real eye opener to go, wow, um, you know, you really can't, d you know, demonstrate maximal strength if you've got restrictions there or or to say it another way, you, you, you're going to do better if you don't. You know, you're going to perform better. You're going to be uh, perform opt more optimally, I believe. Yeah. Well, that was your eye opener. My eye opener was Yanni had been telling me for years and years and years. He'd been saying, "Man, if you want to be able to do the stuff that you're trying to do, you need to lift some weights." And I really, I was like, "No, nope, no way. I'm going to get it by doing calisthenics." Like Rad, I'm, Rad was I'm a, gonna what you would call a calisthenics purist at heart. I was he thought that that was you could just do everything that you can get with weights doing body weight training which a lot of people still believe and i'm not saying that you can't there are i'm sure that there's people out there that have achieved it that way but for me oh, bullshit they've all got dumbbells stashed under their bed <laughs> <laughs> so for me um it was just such an eye-opener to see my brother who had never 
ever gone up to gymnastics rings and just outperformed me so badly, um, like it was it was soul destroying. But it made me realize that 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 raw strength produces results. And then it was confirmed when we were in the gym and Bass, who's our friend who we talk about a lot, Australian strength coach, if you want to look him up on Instagram, who's a power lifter through and through, man. Like this guy is an elite level power lifter and that's what he does. And we were, I was working on the human flag up the back of the gym and, and he came up and, and he goes, oh, what are you guys doing? And we said, oh, we're trying to do this. And I explained the flag to him and he walked up, grabbed onto the store bars and did the most perfect human flag you could ever see. And Except he was- Except he didn't bring his feet together and point his toes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He didn't have like that <laughs> gymnast technique, but he was in a horizontal human flag talking to me going, is this what you do? Is, is this, this it? Is this, is it? this, is this it? what you're meant to do? <laughs> and again, it was this realization that raw strength is such a critical um, ingredient in calisthenics training. It's a critical and, and he ingredient. And he wasn't a captain upper body or any, by any means that time. He was no, one of the biggest legs you've ever seen. Yeah, was, man. Uh, at that yeah, point, yeah. I think he had a 250 squat. Yeah, you know? yeah. 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 deadlift around that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So. 300 yeah. deadlift. Yeah. 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 yeah, back then he was probably even more weighted to his lower yeah. body than he is now. Now he's probably got more weight in his yeah. upper body but back then, man, his legs were like... He was, a, he was a little bit leaner that back then. Yeah, he was. He was, he was <laughs> a little bit. I think, he, I think he was 90 or 95 back then, yeah, and now no, he's, he's about, about 105. Yeah. 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 He's, well, he's about 115 now. Yeah. 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 So, anyway. um, so it, it took us a lot. We, we didn't know the answer. We, we really didn't. We didn't understand how were we going to turn this around because we, we, tried straight, we tried doing what everybody does, which is you do your strength training and you do your fitness if you want to, and then we do some stretching at the end, and we never did it. Yeah. We just never stretched. Um, I, f I found that I wasn't as motivated to do strength training because I was really motivated to get more flexible. It was always something that I wanted to do and I still wasn't great at it. And at that time you're doing stretch like flexibility classes here as well. Yep. You had the different yeah. types of classes we, and that's when I first started training. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. We, yeah, we, we identified did the else need. Does. We identified the need for flexibility, but we looked at how other gyms do it and other gyms have their strength training, their fitness training class and then their flexibility, yeah, the flexibility class, class, you know, and some might have a handstand class or a cal calis gymnastics class, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so we did that. We created a schedule and we started bumping in flexibility. We used to call them Zen Flex classes. <laughs> and and um, classes immediately and we noticed a, a trend, which was that all the girls just did Zen Flex yeah. and all the boys just did Rage, which was our radical advanced group exercise. It was, was our all strength the training, stuff, all the weightlifting, you know. And, yeah. you know, so the, the, the I was going to Zen Flex, but I had a bit of a crush on the coach. So. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, that's he's, right. He's a good looking guy. That's when, that's but, when Mitch was, Mitch was doing yeah. it. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. But we, but we, we <laughs> saw that. that for a while. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, memories. This is going back. This is going um, back. So we, we, Yanni and I and Richard, we, we saw this, this trend where we were like, man, these, there's people that are just- We're not helping anybody. Just, like, we're not helping anyone. We're just Except making- Phil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phil. So, the uh, w w the the whole it, it was all birthed when we went and trained with a friend of ours, um, Aaron McKenzie, over at Origin of Energy, and um, and he definitely leads the way, uh, at least in our circle of influence, with um, you know mobility and flexibility and a, and a really different way of approaching training. And and hats off to him because for us when we went there, that was the birth of the eighteen minute stretching routine. Yep. We'd never done ever done a stretching routine that was that hit the whole body in a in a small time, a small yep. period of time. And we came back and Yanni and I were like, man, we should do a stretching routine like that at the start well, of we, our workouts. We, we took over our whole tribe. We took over all of our trainers and we did a workout with Azza at his gym. Yep. You can yeah, and, yeah. 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 and I just remember like, there was no intention of going over there to learn a stretch routine. We no. just knew we, that what we were doing wasn't working because not enough people were doing a combination of the two. People always do what they're either comfortable with or they, they enjoy doing the most. Yeah. Usually that's ego driven, yep. you know? It's not driven by necessity, yep. it's driven by ego. And, uh, and so when we went there, we did this like routine that Azza just sort of talked us through and said, oh, you know, I just like to do a bit of this, bit of that, bit of that before just to prep the body and get the body going. And I just remember all of us walking out going, I feel amazing. Yeah. Like I yeah, feel my felt, body we, we feels felt really so good, good you know. That workout. Yeah. And then we just talk, talked about how we could incorporate something similar. And that was the birth of the 18 minute mobility yeah. routine. Yeah. It used to be called the flexibility routine. Yeah. but. Um, and then we implemented that for about a year yep. and got really, really good results. Yep. And then it wasn't until Phil 
became certified. Phil was studying all of this time. I, I, originally, when we got together uh, and Phil and I met, he was a massage therapist, brilliant massage therapist. It's one of the dev most devastating re real realities of my life that he's phasing out and becoming more of a physio and less of a massage therapist. <laughs> uh, but um, that's how we really became friends. And then he joined the gym. He was working out at the gym. He went and did an exercise and sports science degree throughout all this time while we, he's just been at uni for fucking decades, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and then, all my 20s. And yeah. then after that, he decided, no, I'm going to do a master's in physiotherapy. And that's really what I want to um, uh, do as a career. And he did that. And so after about a year or so of us doing the 18 minute routine at the start of our workout, which was producing incredible results. He just sort of started dropping little hints and comments in about, you know, there were a few issues with it. There were a few passive stretches that, you know, it's not ideal because it was a whole body routine that we just put on repeat every day. And it isn't ideal for strength for gains yep. to do passive stretching on a muscle that you're about to ask to take or bear a lot of load or a joint. And so he just sort of had a bit of an influence, a very positive influence on us sort of um, iterating that routine. So it became more of a loaded flexibility routine and then we birthed the loaded stretching routine mm -hmm. and that became our new warm-up routine yep. to prep pr to prep the body and yep. to couple that with our strength training and then over the years we just made iteration I after iteration until it just blended together uh, and, and uh, using a lot of the data that we were collecting from a lot of the experts that were associated with mm -hmm. like Phil or mm -hmm. that we train with ourselves, you know, or that we invite to come in and do workshops mm -hmm. here that we learn little bits off like Yo Akeem, yep. who we've done a lot of training with. Well, and well, yeah, then it really became the UMS. You no, know? I'm going to, I'm going to really pinpoint a lot more uh, something in, in, in to bridge that gap in so five minutes yeah so we were <laughs> we went from that to um you know we were doing a stretching day once a week on wednesdays so we had one day where it was just all about flexibility day and then i started up turning up so the, yeah yeah a lot of people Wednesdays a lot of a lot quiet. of people stopped turning up on Wednesdays and um because they just didn't they they saw that as a day that oh, I don't really you know I'm just going to take it as a rest day and then I started working with Joachim online doing online coaching with him to learn more about flexibility and I was doing my own training and I was doing all my strength training first and then I was doing my flexibility training at the end and my workouts were taking about three hours and I was finding that on the days where I was tired, I was cutting my flexibility training short and that pissed me off because that was my really big goal. But I knew that if I wanted to make strength gains, I needed to put strength training first. I couldn't, I couldn't do a, whole, a big flexibility session and then do strength training and expect to lift any good weight. So it was pissing me off. And so I made the decision, I said, stuff this, I'm going to do a set of strength training and then a set of flexibility training. And over the next six months, this was all my own experimentation. I, I knew that if I was doing bench and stretching my shoulders, that that wasn't going to work. I was going to, you know, run a risk of injury or reduce my strength potential. So I figured I out I ways. I that one. Sorry? Yeah. I think that was me who told you off about the, that one. Yeah, did you? There was a yeah. while there where you were doing upper body. and Yeah, right. Like, well, yeah. there you go. There you go. And so it was through having somebody like Phil with his level of education, looking at what I was doing and going, oh, man, you might want to consider this. And then me experimenting with how can I put lower body stretching with upper body strength and vice versa that we got to where the UMS is now. And then we slowly introduced it into the gym, turned it into something that was creating phenomenal results. And then that was the birth of the online coaching program. Yeah. And that's how we got to where we are now. And that's why people say that what we do is so revolutionary because if anybody else is doing it like we are, let me know because I've never seen it. The, and stu the stupid thing about it is that it's stupidly simple. Yeah. It's really, really simple. And, and it makes so much sense it's, it's, now that we're it doing it. It does far less than what a lot of people do. Like when we did the hours of training strength in the morning and hours of training flexibility in the evening, it did, I'm not going to lie, it did produce a good result. But it was unsustainable. It was terrible for our business. We got nothing done because th there was for a while there, it, it peaked out when we were training for like five hours a day. Yep. It was just ridiculous, you know. Yep. And I was just like, guys, we're not getting anything done. Like, this is just silly, you know. And then how can you make that a practical solution for the masses, yep. for people who've got to be at work all day? Like, who yep. has time to train five hours a day other than a personal trainer or maybe a physique model or bodybuilder mm -hmm. yep. or, you know, an actor training specifically for a role who has a period of time to prepare mm -hmm. or a professional athlete maybe, you know. Yep. 
but it just wasn't realistic. It wasn't practical. And, uh, and, and then on top of all of that, what we started to find was that you just were knackered by the end of the day. And often that would mean that your flexibility session would be lackluster yep. at best. Yep. And, yep. and what we do now in one hour at Unity Gym, people get seriously strong and seriously flexible. And if anybody and wants to know the results, all you need to do is go to our Instagram page and look at the results that our members are getting. And the, the reason why we wanted to say this is because we've, we've never said this before, but for those of you that are coming into this ecosystem and buying the 18 minute mobility routine or the flexibility routine or the muscle up masterclass or whatever it is, they are phenomenal programs, but none of them teach you how to put it together properly except the UMS yeah. online coaching. And we did this show today because we want you guys to know that this is your last week to get a two week free trial of this and find out for yourself how phenomenal it is. And you know what? We do have to end this now because we're going to a live coaching in that online coaching group. But to look at the amount of people that have stayed with us on this show, it seems like this is a topic that people are interested in. Maybe we can, because we didn't actually get to talk deeper about how we solved the problem today. We basically just spoke about the problem. But maybe yeah. tomorrow we can go deeper into how we do it and, and, and what we do yeah. um, so that you guys can... Uh, just very quickly before we wrap up, because we've got a minute. Um, Stephen's saying, I, th his answer to the question of the day, how do you split strength? and flexibility he said i didn't that's the biggest reason i like your program that's freaking awesome you're gonna love it mate i know you're just getting started in the ums online coaching Stephen, uh, i'm looking forward to working with you more because he's got he's got a long history of training which is a lot of fun to work with it's a lot of fun to work with new people too nathan campbell i don't split my strength and flexibility training i assume that's why my body feels the way it does Guaranteed. <laughs> possibly you're where we were yeah. all right guys everyone who's new to the UMS online coaching group, jump over to that group now. We're wrapping up a little bit early today so that we can get this right this week. We really want to make sure that those, there's about 45 people to date today that have joined um, new. So we're really looking forward to welcoming you all over there now. Jump over to the UMS online coaching group. We're going to talk more about our plans tomorrow uh, for the online coaching, some big changes that are happening. And remember, one last time, guys, if you're listening on the replay on the podcast or watching the replay on YouTube, get yourself into the UMS Movement Mastermind private Facebook group. That is the first step. Then you get to interact with us on these live recordings and you get access to all these amazing offers that we give these guys. And uh, it's just a <coughs> really cool group. Yeah, and people on Friday who listened to the podcast and got out and it ended after 30 seconds and then didn't tell me. There was 97 of you who listened to the, the episode <laughs> and it finished after the intro. I didn't get one message or oh. no, no one got a message here telling me that I, I'd screwed it up. It so an awesomely if there's something podcast. wrong with the with the show, please do let us know. Cause <laughs> I, I, I re-uploaded it and we'll listen to it again now. But Good yeah. stuff. Yeah. And just quickly, guys. Oh, yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Let's, let's wrap this let's up. Let's wrap this up. Yeah. And uh, everyone that's, uh, that's jumped on this UMS online coaching free trial, make sure you join the UMS online coaching group because that's where we're going to coach you now. See you soon, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. We're going to go deeper into this topic. And uh, uh, yeah. Bye. That's it. <laughs> That's, That's it. it. Mark We're out. <laughs> Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept what you're going to have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that far. It's the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcut to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. It's the gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.